today's beer is Lamp Lighter Amber Ale from TransCanada Brewing right here in Winnipeg. You would be forgiven for thinking that's a reference to uh, Bachman Turner Overdrive taking care of business, but I'm, I'm sure it's just a complete coincidence. So today is going to be kind of a special mailbag because I got two things that came from some of you guys to my mailbox, uh, my post office box. But first I'll start with the stuff that I actually ordered here. Starting with this one, which says LED diodes. Surface mounts, reds. Holy hell, tiny. Those look like they're 0603s. Ah, that makes sense. A while ago, somebody said they were going to send me a circuit board that they designed that took 0603 LEDs and other components, but they weren't going to be sending the components because they hadn't, didn't have enough uh, on hand or it would make the shipping too expensive, which is completely reasonable. Um, shipping to Canada is frighteningly expensive, especially for international. So now I've got those. 0402-0603-0805-1206 SMD pre-soldered micro LED white, red, blue diodes, 20 centimeter line, 13 colors, green, yellow, RGB, orange, pink. Uh, I got these from Slienner, I think the name is, uh, $1.44 Canadian for a hundred of them or 99 American pennies. And yeah, it looks like they've got quite the assortment. Hmm. 0603 RGB. Wow, that would be ridiculously tiny. Anyway, I, I got the 0603 uh, red for under 100 pieces of them. Oh, and here's a handy dandy little chart. Okay. Nothing we didn't already know. The 120 degree viewing angle. That's maybe useful. Uh, clear lens, but it is red and it's between 2 and 2.2 .2 volts. Like it said on the package. Nice, nice, nice little beer. Uh, what do we have here? We have electronic sensor, the next thing in. Hmm, those don't look like sensors at all. You'd be excused for thinking that those are resistors, but I don't think they are. I think these are, in fact, inductors. Yeah, 0R1 microhenry, 10 microhenry, 150 microhenry. Okay, so it's just an assortment of axial inductors. Again, just shop stock, uh, it's always handy to have the basic components. And increasingly as uh, buck and boost converters and uh, uh, constant current drivers and things like that start crossing my bench and I start playing with them, inductors can be much more useful items. At one point, you know, on, they were only really a common thing if you're doing RF, but uh, yeah, they are quite commonly used these days. 120 pieces, 10 value, color code, wheel, inductor, loop inductance, kit, quarter watt, 0.1 microhenry to 1 millihenry. I got these from CC10086. Uh, and there wasn't any shipping when I bought them, and when I bought them, they were $3.26. So, as always, I'm going to provide a link to the one that I bought, but... Use the search terms and look around, sort by lowest price first. You don't necessarily have to buy from the same person that I did. There's often a better deal available. And what else we got from China here? It says flashlight. Yeah, flashlight. Okay. I wasn't sure if that was an E or not, but I'm pretty sure that says flashlight. It is a little flashlight. Okay, a little keychain flashlight. Okay. A rubbery kind of stuff here. Uh, on off is like that. It's actually got batteries in it. Batteries included. Okay. Kind of a, uh, what do we call that? A cool white LED. Okay. And let's take, oh, that's why it's got batteries in it. And that's why I bought it. It's a rechargeable flashlight. Well, that's a nifty little thing. Mini USB rechargeable LED light flashlight lamp pocket keychain torch waterproof. I got this from Princess1555. Um, I paid $2.62 for it with no shipping, of course. An assortment of colors. Yeah, whatever. It says it's rechargeable, though. It is LED. I'm not convinced that it's waterproof. 
Not sure what this is all about. It obviously came from China. Anyway, it says it's a half watt USB rechargeable LED flashlight. Uh, half watt uh, LED, multiple colors available, blah, blah, blah. 25 lumens. It says it takes 20 to 30 minutes to charge and it's got a 70 milliamp hour lithium battery in it. So let's bring in the power supply and the little charger doctor thing here and see what it charges at. I got five volts set on there. Um, so if it's charging, it's drawing like eight milliamps according to this guy here, which is nothing. Actually, that's just the charger doctor. Huh. Why does that guy want to charge? Interesting. And it's fully charged already. Let's just try it straight into there. No, that's not really taking a charge. And it doesn't seem to draw off the uh, off the power source when you turn it on. There it's on. No, negligible. Hmm. Is this a crappy little one that doesn't actually recharge even though it claims to? Can you say future teardown? I knew you could. And now is where it gets exciting because I got a couple of things that you guys donated uh, to my mailbox, my post office box here. The uh, there's, a, there's a link on my about page if you don't want to freeze frame it. Uh, anyway, this came from Scott in North Carolina and he paid way more for shipping than anybody should be expected to and man i really do appreciate it no matter what's in here you went out of your way it's got a note oh i like notes what do we got here a small note a couple of you have included are various breadboard like prototyping boards i've designed for myself for cheap pcb host manufacturing easy to lay out cheap to get produced there's three sizes um, one should do a small terminal block for power on it most of them have six columns of holes uh, there's also included two breakout or breakout boards for Nano, Pro Mini, and some of the Node MCU boards. Wow, with various different uh, power and pin headers. That's awesome. That is very cool. Let's uh, let's take a peek at these guys. So what do we have in here? Oh, wow, there's a whole bunch of boards, dude. So what do we got here? So these are your basic kind of proto bo prototyping board. They're, it's all through holes and these are, let's see, these are laid out with strips like that going all the way around for power. That's cool. And oh yeah, I guess I could have told that from this side. So they're laid out in columns, nice through holes with big pads on them. So there's a couple of those, one in white and one in this neat, I guess that's uh, the natural green. What is this one? M Mini Pro Breakout V1. So, okay. So he's got, that's the Mini Pro. I assume that's a uh, Pro Mini kind of thing. Let me just grab a Pro Mini. Okay, so he's got ground voltage and signal running across both sides here. So you can, uh, with, with these little rows of uh, three here, you can just plug some header pins in there, or strips of three, and then you can plug uh, DuPont extension cables on, or you can plug servos actually straight on there. That's slick. And then screw terminals soldered onto there. That's a cool little board. What else we got here? This one is a nano breakout, it says. I'm sure I've got nanos around here too, someplace. For some reason, I don't have any nanos that have pins soldered onto them right now. I must have used them all. But that's D13 up there, which means that guy would go on there and it would do the same thing, same kind of breakouty thing. That's cool. And a Node MCU. Do I have one of those? Is that the Node MCU that he was talking about? That's a different one. Yeah, I don't have that particular variant of the Node MCU. Um, 
but again it's got the three volt and the uh, three volt and five volts there power in things laid out nicely those are some nice boards man that's a non board okay ah that's just the larger version of this one okay in a pretty blue and a couple in white those are very much like a solderless breadboard layout only you can take your uh your circuit straight off the breadboard and put it straight onto there and solder it in in exactly the same layout just pin for pin is it adafruit i think has something called a perma proto board which is similar to this but this one i think has a couple more pins on there a couple more holes which is pretty slick you sent me a couple of those and a couple of larger ones which are yeah 35 by 6. yeah because the the normal breadboard has five pins so this gives you an extra pin across plus then the power running around the outside and yeah it loops around so you don't even have to run a jumper across from one side to another like you do on a breadboard because that's done wow man those are cool thanks for sending those along these are going to show up in some future projects thanks again scott i'm going to have fun with those and thanks for watching and and actually scott is also in addition to this generous donation he's also one of my patreon supporters <laughs> man I, I just can't get over it when people are actually digging what i'm doing here this is yeah, cheers to you guys that's great Okay, and the last thing in today is also something that came into my post office box. This came from Renard Plus Shop, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, in Salem, Oregon. So I'm thinking this might be a sample from a store or something. Hmm. Uh, yeah, so Dean and Kirk, okay. Uh, I contacted you before about the Wi-Fi board that he designed that allows control of pixel LEDs like the WS2812 from ESP8266. Now that I got a PA box, they decided that uh, they'd send me some. Cool. A couple of board kits and a programmer kit for the ESP8266 module. And they got some links to their stuff there. Okay. Um, hope you find these useful. Well, thanks guys. Let's take a look what's in the, bar, in the bag. It is in fact some kits. So, looks like two of that one and one of this one okay renard plus reefer okay esp flasher so what is piece of these those are esp 01s okay with that eight pin sure so that looks like it probably plugs in there and then this guy probably plugs in there okay so what is this guy ah a ch340 okay that makes sense so usb to serial to this guy and capacitor some resistors and a reset in the program switch aha i actually got some of those esp ones in my last mailbag and i commented that they're a little inconvenient to program i i may have oversold that a little bit just because i'm kind of green at programming these things but looks like they've uh, they've taken care of some of it for you and given you the reset and the program button so you don't have to jump or pins and stuff that just does it for you hmm does that have oh yeah it's got a it's got the eight pin socket for the esp that could come in handy just for the ones that i brought that i bought as well cool so uh let's take a quick peek at these other ones then what we got in here there's the board there's i'm assuming that's the yeah, it's the ESP01 or ESP8266-01, I guess you could call it. Uh, some screw terminals, a header, some capacitors and stuff. What is this chunky boy here? 7805. Okay, that's a 5-volt linear regulator. That makes a certain amount of sense. Uh, what else we got in here? Ah, there's another. Maybe that's a 3-volt regulator there. Yes, it is. There's our 3 volts. Okay. So there's a 3 volt regulator and a 5 volt regulator, V in, pixels out, ground data in V plus. Pixels, like it said in the note, is uh, WS2012 or similar. There's where the 
little ESP goes bonk onto there. Uh, assortment of passives, a uh, little transistor there. Okay. Huh. That's a cute looking little board. Let's see if there's any information on their website just quickly here. So this uses the ESP01. Yeah, we knew that as the brains can be configured to run from either 5 volts or 12 volts input to drive either 5 or 12 volt pixel strips. Okay. Ooh, it can talk DMX. That's interesting. I assume from the control side to uh, from the like on whatever's on the other end of the Wi-Fi. That's interesting. I'll have to. Uh, well, I I don't have any DMX stuff here at the moment. That's a world that I want to get into playing with a little bit, but right now it's just kind of out of my price range and. Other than dicking around with it on the channel, I don't have a real-world application for it, so... And here's the other guy. Renard Plus ESP Extreme Flasher. Wow, there's where the reefer came from. Okay. So they're not necessarily Cheech and Chong fans. Um, so yeah, there is, there is in fact, the board that we got. So here's the manual for the thing, which is like a 20-page PDF. Wow. Bunch of stuff about how to use it. Oh, hey, and there's the schematic of the thing. Cool. So we've got two switches, one of them connected to GPIO 0. So that's the one that puts it into programming mode. Um, so you, if I remember correctly, you have to hold that down while you power it up or something, uh, some kind of uh, voodoo like that to get it to go into programming mode. And this guy here goes to the reset pin. And RxD and TXD come from... Okay. That's fairly straightforward. And then this over here is that CH340 board. Neat. Okay, now here's the manual for this Renard Plus Wi-Fi Pixel Board Kit thing. Ah, there's two different versions of it. Which one did I get? Looks like I got the 3.1 version. Okay, but they've got both of their versions in this manual. That's nice of them bunch of information about how you might want to use it and stuff like that some links to other stuff bill of materials oh wow they've gone all out even if you want to just buy the blank boards from them and populate them yourselves they've that's cool and there's the schematic of this guy oh and even a suggested outdoor case yeah i guess if this is intended for christmas lighting control uh, cases would be important. And wow, a case doesn't get any more basic and simple and completely functional than that. That's excellent. I mean, obviously, you could 3D print it, but <laughs> this is just a good option. Nice, guys. And then assembly instructions. Again, a 25-page manual. That is a great set of instructions. I, even some basic soldering. Huh. Those instructions with little check boxes and stuff, that reminds me of some of the really good quality kits that I used to get back in the 80s. Like from, oh, I don't know, Heathkit was kind of the, the pinnacle of kits. And this sort of reminds me of that. I mean, that came with a big printed book, but uh, nobody sends paper around the world anymore. It's all PDFs. Wow, this really is something that a, a beginner could probably deal with. I assume that's their target audience, is somebody who's not uh, not a uh, full-on electronics lunatic like me. Well, there is the contents of today's very interesting Mailbag Monday. Uh, let's just quickly uh, deal with the transit times. 34 days for the LEDs. Uh, the flashlight thing took 31 days. And the inductors took, uh, what is that, 31 days as well? 32 days, sorry. So, and th those all came from China, of course. And a special thanks to Scott for sending these boards that he he made up. Ultimately, he made them up for himself. And uh, I'm not sure if he's going to chime in in the comments or not. Uh, they look like they'd be really convenient little boards to play with. And I'm interested to use them in some upcoming uh, experiments and projects. And thanks to Dean and Kirk for sending these things over. Uh, 
it's pretty obvious that there's going to be some upcoming video, an upcoming video or two assembling these kits and uh, and playing with them. Um, I'm going to try not to drag it out over like a 10 part series or something stupid like that, like some channels do. But uh, yeah, I'll, I'll probably toss these guys together in uh, in one video and then maybe if, if I'm quick enough putting them together, I'll uh, play with them in that one. Otherwise, I'll, uh, I'll explore with software a little bit and play with them in, in another video. So yeah, um, thanks to these guys for sending me this stuff. That is so cool of you. I'm, I'm still blown away by that. Uh, thanks to the rest of you, all of you, for watching. Uh, thanks to my Patreons for their support to help pay for this kind of stuff here. Um, yeah, this little keychain thing is going to be its own teardown video because I don't understand why I, I doubt very much that they sent it with a hundred percent charge in it. It's going to have self discharged a little bit. So I'm going to try and figure out why that battery is not charging. I have my suspicions that they might be just playing stupid games and misrepresenting it, but you don't know until you tear it down, right? Thanks for watching. Uh, comments and questions down in the comment section, as usual. Links to this stuff, uh, except for Scott's boards, because he's not a company and he doesn't sell them. Unless he chooses to put a link to his Gerbers in the comments, that'd be cool. Um, yeah, um, down, in the com down in the description, as usual. Thanks for watching. I'll talk to you later. It's a pretty good beer, too.